Okay, here we are with chapter three, lesson number one. Standard integrals. This is really a recap of standard integrals from higher maths. It is worth spending a bit of time on this though to make sure you're 100% okay with these questions before you move on to harder questions in the rest of this chapter. So let's look back to standard integrals from higher maths. If we are integrating x to the power of n, well, you know if you integrate, you add 1 to the power. So whatever the power is, if it was n, well, when you integrate, it will go to n plus 1. What you then do is you add 1 to the power and then you divide by that power. So if it was n plus 1, you would then divide by n plus 1. The way I'm writing that is I'm just putting it to the side, so it's 1 over n plus 1. However, what do you always need whenever you integrate? Plus c! You remembered. So you've always got your plus c. What if instead you had the integral of ax plus b to the power of n? So we've got this part in brackets to the power of n. Well, again, you do the same thing. So you'd have ax plus b and you add 1 to the power. So instead of n, you'll have whatever n is and you add 1 to it. And again, after you add 1 to the power, you divide by that power. So you divide by n plus 1. However, if you notice here, you don't just have an x. You've got ax plus b. So what you need to do is you differentiate what is inside the brackets. And if you differentiate ax plus b, well, you'd be left with a. And you would also have to divide by that. So we're also dividing by a. And again, I'm writing that at the side. So it's 1 over a. And finally, you need, well remembered, you need your plus c. Let's try some examples then with standard integrals. So example one, integrate three x squared, take away one over the square root of x. First thing that you want to think then, Abby, help us out. Perfect, square root of x, you write that as x to the power of one half. So you'd have the integral of three x squared, take away one over x to the power of a half. Then what do you do? Perfect, you have to either write the x to the power of a half on the top line, so it'll be x to the power of negative, ha negative a half, making sure you put brackets around this bit, then you can multiply the brackets out. Or you could think, right, well, I've got x, 3x squared over x to the half, and I've also got the one over x to the half, so you can split it up into two fractions. It doesn't matter which way you do it. Either move x to the half to the top line, so it's x to the negative a half, multiply out the brackets, and you will get that. Or you can split it up and simplify it, and you still get 3x to the power of 3 over 2, take away x to the power of negative 1 half. Here, you've got the 3x squared over x to the half. Well, 2 take away a half is 1 and a half, which is to the power of 3 over 2. And then x to the negative a half, you bring that up to the top line, you've got x to the negative 1 half. From there, you are wanting to integrate. So, you're going to have x to the power of 3 over 2. The 3 here is just going to stay as 3. Nothing's changing with that. The index, though, here, you're going to add 1 on. Remember, the quick way of adding 1 is just to the top, add the bottom. So 3 add 2 is 5, so you'd have x to the power of 5 over 2. What you then need to do, though, is you divide by that new index. So we divide by 5 over 2. And remember, dividing by 5 over 2, to divide by a fraction, you can flip it and times. So dividing by 5 over 2 is the same as timesing by 2 over 5. Take away x to the power of negative a half, you want to integrate that as well. So to integrate that, well again, you want to take your x to the power of negative a half and add 1 to the power. So add 1 onto the power here, negative 1 add 2 gives you 1, so it'll be 1 over 2, so it's x to the power of 1 half. Once again, you want to divide by that new power, so you're dividing by 1 half. And when you divide by a fraction, you can flip it and times, so divide by a half is the same as timesing by 2. So you've got 2x to the power of a half, and on the end you need, well done, plus c. From there, just simplify that, so... 3, you can treat as 3 over 1, so 3 times 2 is 6, 1 times 5 is 5, so you get 6 over 5, times x to the power of 5 over 2. You're taking away 2x to the half, well, x to the power of a half is the square root, so it's take away 2 times the square root of x, plus c. Example 2, integrate 2x plus 3 to the power of 5. Once again, what you're thinking is, right, well, if I've got something to the power of something, I add 1 to the power. So, your 2x plus 3 to the power of 5 will go to 2x plus 3 to the power of 6. But after you add 1 to the power, what do you do? 
You divide by that power perfect. So you would divide by six. However, we don't just have an x here. It's not just x to the power of something. We've got our 2x plus 3 in brackets. So when the brackets are involved, you have to differentiate what is inside the brackets. So if you differentiate this, you get 2. And you would also divide by that. So we are dividing by 2. Again, we're just putting that to the front and putting 1 over 2. Because a half is the same as dividing by 2. And in the end, good, you've got your plus c. So just remember, differentiate what is inside the brackets and divide by that, as it says here. From there, simplify that. 1 over 2 times 1 over 6 will be 1 over 12. So you've got 12 brackets, 2x plus 3 to the power of 6 plus c. Example 3, integrate 2 over 3x plus 1 to the power of 5. So for this one, what would you do, Cameron? Brilliant, well done. The first thing you would do is you think, right, well, I'm leaving the 2, but I need this to be on the top line. So you can write it as 2 times, and then in brackets you've got 3x plus 1, but that'll go to the power of negative 5. Good. After that, well, you can integrate it. So you would take your 2, and you would leave it as 2. You would take your 3x plus 1 to the power of negative 5, and you add 1 to that power. So if you add 1 to the power, it will go to 3x plus 1 to the power of negative 4. Be careful with the negatives. From there, you would then divide by that new power. So we're dividing by negative 4. Again, I'm just moving that to the side. So I've got 1 over negative 4. And I'm also going to have another 2 bits. What would these 2 bits be? Perfect. You need to divide by the derivative of the Bracket. So if you differentiate what's inside the brackets, you get 3. So you'd also divide by 3, which is where the third would come from. And in the end, you would have plus c. Well done. So just remember, you need to divide by the derivative of the brackets. That is where that third comes from. From there, simplify that. Well, you treat 2 as 2 over 1. So you've got 2 times 1 times 1, which is 2. You've got 1 times 3 times 4 is 12. So really, if you take a negative to the front, you'd have negative 2 over 12, but 2 twelfths is the same as negative 1 sixth. Or you could cancel the 2 with the 4 and write that as 1 over negative 2. You can do it different ways. Either way, you get negative 1 sixth. Take the 3x plus 1 to the power of negative 4, just leave that as it is just now, and again, you've got your plus c. If you were asked to write that with a positive index, well, the negative would stay at the front, and on the top, you would just have 1, but the 3x plus 1 to the negative 4 would move down, so you'd have 6 times 3x plus 1 to the power of positive 4. And that's your answer. Example 4. Integrate the square root of 4x plus 1, but this time, we have our limits. We're wanting to integrate between 0 and 2. So to do this, well, we want to start it the same way. The first thing we're doing is we're thinking, right, well, if we've got a root sign, I need to rewrite that. So, Mark, that would become? Good. 4x plus 1 to the power of a half. So I've not integrated yet, so I'm leaving the integral sign, leaving the 2, leaving the 0, and I've got 4x plus 1 to the power of a half. From there then, well, if I integrate that, well, you would have 4x plus 1 to the power of a half. You add 1 to the power, so a half add 1. Do 1 add 2, you get 3, so go to 3 over 2. So 4x plus 1 to the power of 3 over 2. Whenever you integrate, you add 1 to the power, and then you divide by that power. Remember, dividing by 3 over 2 is the same as flip it upside down and times. So divide by 3 over 2 is the same as timesing by 2 over 3. What else do you need to do? Well, you look at the brackets. Inside the brackets, we've got a 4x plus 1. You always need to look at what's in the brackets and differentiate it. So if we differentiate that, we get a 4. And then you would also have to divide by the 4. So as it says here, remember to divide by the derivative of the brackets. Derivative of the brackets is 4, so we're dividing by 4. Hence, the 1 quarter. From there, simplify that. Well, you could cancel 2 here and 2 here, and then you'll get down to 1 sixth of 4x plus 1 to the power of 3 over 2. After that, well, make sure you don't have a plus c because we do have limits at this time, so you don't need that. And you're now wanting to sub these limits in. So we've got a sixth times, and then if you sub in 2, 4 times 2 add 1 is going to give you 9, so it's 9 to the power of 3 over 2. Sub in 0 as well, so it'll be a sixth times, and that'll be 4 times 0 is 0. Add 1 is just 1, so 1 to the power of 3 over 2. And then you can work this out. To work this out, well, a sixth would really stay as it is. And then you're working out 9 to the power of 3 over 2. I would always think about flower power. So at the bottom of a flower, you've got a root. And at the top, you've got the flower, which rhymes with power. 
So at the bottom, you've got the second root, so it's a square root. Square root of 9 is 3, and then if you cube that, well, it's the, to the power, so it's to the power of 3. So 3 to the power of 3 is going to give you 27. So you'd have 27 over 6, and 27 over 6 would simplify to 4 and a half. You are then wanting to take away, if you work out 1 to the power of 3 over 2, well, I suppose on the bottom you've got the root, so the square root of 1 is just 1. If you do that to the power of 3, well, 1 times 1 times 1 is just 1, so it stays at 1 sixth. From there, if you work that out, 4 and a half, take away 1 sixth, that will just give you 4 and 1 third. And that will be your answer. Try these questions. See how you get on. It's just standard integrals. It's a recap from higher. Best of luck. Any problems, let me know. But make sure you're okay with these questions before you move on with this chapter. Best of luck. Bye.